All right, we're back. We are live from the Rolling Hills Resort Casino in Corning, California, today and tomorrow. And I'm here because tonight, as I mentioned, Cheap Trick is playing. One of the great bands of all time and opening for uh, them tonight is this. Uh, these guys are all right. I mean, it's a decent band that's opening. They're, they're, they're kind of okay. Ah, I'm busting balls because that's what we do. Look at this. Pat Badger is here from Extreme. Good to see you, buddy. It's so good to be here, Eddie. It's It, it feels like forever since I saw you because yeah. I think the last time Extreme played was on the Monsters of Rock cruise back in 2020, right when the pandemic was hitting. So this is the first time we're playing. In, yeah. In, and I'm, jo I'm joking. I you know I love you guys and another amazing band. So it's oh, thanks, a great man. double bill tonight with Cheap Trick and Extreme. And by the way, I just found out there's a third act on the bill. Uh, that's apparently Alice Cooper's son. Does he have a son that's in the band? You know, I was wondering who the opening act was. I didn't know that, that that's who's It's one that. of Alice's yeah. kids. Is that right? The, the promoter told me last night, which I had no idea. So we're, we're big a, Alice fans, too. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. It makes me feel so old when they, all these bands, they just talk about Fogarty's kids opening for him, and then yeah. Alice's kids in the... In the it's, ever, it's crazy. It's, I'm grooming my kid right now to be the bass player of Extreme. Are you going to replace you? <laughs> Why not? It seems to be the thing to do. Do you know... Do you know, I'll never, when you say something like that, Pat, it reminds me of something I did on TV, on my old TV show, that I still can't believe to this day that I did this, but it speaks to what a great human being and great sense of humor Michael Anthony has. <laughs> oh, he's the best. The best. Because we were, I was interviewing Chickenfoot. It was at Irving Plaza in New York, second level of the... The, the, the upper balcony area. I don't know if you've ever been Irving Plaza. Oh, yeah. A, yeah, we played there. Right. So there's a balcony and it drops, you know, yeah. the floor on the bottom. So we shot this before they sound checked that day, before the doors were open. And it was all four guys from Chickenfoot, Satriani, Michael, Sammy, and mm -hmm. Chad. And at, that was at the time that Wolf just started playing in, in Van Halen recently, right? So I'm talking to... Um, Satriani, all four of the guys are standing. This is all on camera. This actually happened. And I say to Satch, I go, hey, Joe, you got any kids? And Joe's like, yeah, as a matter of fact, I do. I go, so how, how long before one of them is good enough to play bass and replaces Michael Anthony oh. at Chickenfoot? <laughs> <laughs> now, cool. I only knew I could do that because Michael and I are friends. And oh, yeah. He's such, such a, a sense sweetheart. of humor. Yeah. And he goes, he looks, he goes, oh! And you, Chad Smith jumped over the railing. This is all on camera of Irving <laughs> Plaza. That's like a 15-foot drop. And I looked at the guys. I go, he's your drummer. You got a gig tonight. He's going to twist his ankle. He goes, yeah, he's insane. I mean, but anyway, it was, a, you know, yeah, yeah, there's yeah. so much of that going on now. It's yeah. like, you know, who knows? Oh, yeah. No, there's a lot of kids out there taking, uh, you know, taking a new path and, and creating stuff. And it, it's, it's funny that we are at that age, though, where, like, you know, especially the, the generation of bands before us, you know, 10 years older than us, all those kids were, uh, you know, th they're all starting their own bands. And, yeah. you know, it's, it's crazy. You have kids? I have, yeah. How, yeah. How old? Uh, my son's 19. Does he play anything? He plays guitar, but he, I told him, you're not going into the music business, <laughs> no, <laughs> no. no matter what you do. Yeah. <laughs> Is he good? Yeah, he plays. Uh, you know, he plays guitar. He's good. Does he want to do what Dad does? No, he's no, not. He's, he's doing it for he's, fun. He's actually going to college now and and studying. You know, stuff like engineering and things that I could never comprehend. Keep <laughs> keeping it as a hobby then is basically yeah, yeah, what yeah, it is. Yeah. So, dude, you look great. What'd you do, man? You got to give me your tip. You, uh, you weren't eating at Rock and Brews last night, clearly. Dude, I I, I uh, went on a little diet. I, I dieted down because I was on the. Uh, you know, eat and drink anything I want because I got no gigs because of COVID, and I put on a little a the little COVID weight. twenty, so, yeah, I put the on the COVID so I just, Yeah, I just lost the COVID twenty. And how'd you do it? Uh dude, it was as simple as diet and exercise. Yeah. You know, they say that that's what you I have know. to do. And I uh, I stopped drinking for a little while. Mm -hmm. you know, obviously, all those empty calories don't help. So, right. Um, yeah, I you just, drink I it feel now. Great. Yeah, I'm back to drinking. All right, good. We'll have a few tonight. <laughs> See, we can put the 15 back on this weekend. Yeah, Pat. yeah. I think I'll sweat it out tonight, though. It's going to be hot out here. You haven't played. Now, you mentioned the Monsters Cruise. I remember because we were all on that, and it was funny at that time because everybody was talking like, uh, oh, this Corona thing. You know, we were kind of all joking about it, like, ah, it's not going to – everyone's drinking Corona beer. Like, ah, it's not a thing. And, of course, the world changed shortly after that cruise. Absolutely. But, I mean, we, we – uh, that was the last time Extreme played. That was the last time we played was at, on that cruise. And um, I remember being on – like, seeing on my phone that the news was breaking about, like, the Diamond Princess or whatever that ship was. It was – 
being quarantined over like in Japan. I'm thinking to myself, oh my God, we're on this cruise ship. But what if that happens to us? And we're mm. like stuck on this thing for like week. And it ended up, you know, some of those cruise ships ended up, uh, you know, weeks of people being quarantined. It was crazy at that time. And, and we it, all thought we were going to die. I think there's actually a documentary about that exact ship and, the, and what mm. happened on that. Because that was like the first time that people were quarantined on the ship. I saw it. I think it was on HBO mm. that they actually covered that. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it, it, I think we're, it's interesting because we all talk about, I do it as well, like the pandemic and the effects of it in past tense. And of course, we're all living again, which is great. But the reality is every day I have a story on here about a tour being halted or disrupted oh, still, still because yeah, of it. Of course. And you guys lost a show at M3, right? We did, yeah. Kevin uh, ended up, uh, you know, testing positive. And so even though he wasn't like, you know, on his deathbed or whatever, it would be irresponsible to fly or be, you know, ex expose other people to it. So we had to pull the plug on M3 like, you know, a couple of days before. So it was, uh, you know, that was a little disappointing, but... So it was Kevin that had it. I thought, I thought Gary or Nuno had it, too. I just, I didn't you know. know, we've all had it. Well, yeah. I don't think Nuno's ever had it, but, you know, we've all, like, had a little bout with it. Um, but nothing, you know, obviously, knock on wood, nothing serious. So um, it is what it is, you know. That, like you said, there's shows, tours getting canceled left and right still to this day it's crazy know? and everybody seems to have an alternate out there like a, a ringer either a guy a crew guy or a guy they're holding it uh, that knows the set to yeah. be called in in the event that something goes down so they don't miss a show obviously you guys are not really in a position that you want to do that no we've never uh, even talked about doing that i mean if it's not the four of us i don't think we're gonna uh <laughs> we're now, gonna play a show now going into your first show tonight where you have not played in over two years. Mm -hmm. Is that nerves at all anymore? Or is that, do you rehearse? Did you rehearse? You know, uh, we, we did a rehearsal, Gary, Kevin, and I did. You know, Nuno lives out here on the West Coast. So, you know, it didn't really make sense for us all to fly out here to, to rehearse. You know, we, we've done shows in the past, other tours, other shows that we've done this, this very same thing where we all, you know, Gary, uh, Kevin, Gary, and I have gotten together. And then, uh, you know, we, we, we just, you know, come do our thing. So um, we're, I'm not nervous about it. You know, I've played gigs in the last couple of years, so it's not the first time I've stepped on stage. Uh, so What I'm have you looking... done in the last couple of years? I heard so, you're playing with this Journey tribute that's, like, kind of okay. <laughs> you know, it's, it's fun to, to play in a tribute band. I have my own tribute band, the Dark Desert Eagles, which is an Eagles band. Oh, you told me about that, yeah, actually. Yeah, so I've been playing gigs with that, with that band for the last couple of years, and instead of playing bass, I've, uh, I play guitar and sing uh, lead vocals, so it's been a big... Uh, eye-opening experience uh you know taking a different role within a band and singing eagle stuff i mean all that harmony and stuff oh it's yeah it's got to be unbelievable yeah and I'm, I'm singing the uh glenn fry and the don henley stuff so it's it's uh it's a trip singing those songs and seeing people singing those you know classic hits yeah uh, back at you you know um but yeah i've been playing also uh i'm filling in on bass this summer with uh, my good friend and manager uh rob his uh his journey tribute called Voyage, which is, we, we did our first gig about a week ago um, at Hampton Beach, sold out 1,800 people. And so that was kind of a gut check time for me because that was the first time I've played bass on stage in two years and getting in front of all these people on no rehearsal. I just learned their stuff from some live recordings and stuff. But again, it's so fun to play those old songs that we grew up listening to. And, of course. And, and uh, yeah, it's just, it's, you know, so, so this summer I have some Eagles and, uh, journey and extreme dates uh, voyage i'm sorry not journey <laughs> voyage dates and extreme so i'm i'm i feel like i'm back on tour this summer it's been great so you and and finally with extreme there's there's touring activity going on because in addition to this first show tonight uh you're doing monsters on the mountain which is in uh tennessee, tennessee. That's on a year on the August 19th date. I believe that's yeah, the first night. And then you got a date here at uh Rock in the Rivers in Montana which I've actually been there. I, I celebrated my 50th birthday hosting that show, which is now seven years ago, but I don't know if you guys played there. It's a beautiful set. No, I've never been out there, but uh, we're hoping to uh, invite the cast of Yellowstone out to the show. <laughs> Kevin Costner <laughs> comes riding in yeah. on a horse. Yeah, that'd be amazing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I, we want to meet Beth. We, we yeah, wanna, oh, yeah, I, I think yeah. everyone would like to. She's wild, yeah. <laughs> Uh, Montana, uh, Rock in the Rivers, great setting. Again, I was there. I haven't been there since, but seven years ago, and um, that or eight years ago, coming up now, and uh, you'll, you're doing that on August 12th. And uh, 
you're also on, I think you're already on Monsters of Rock for the next one, right? We are. Yeah. Uh, confirmed uh, for Monsters. Which uh, is early next year. Yeah, except I think it's running a little later. It is. Yeah. It's like in May or something, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. yeah it so is a little we're, later. We're confirmed on that. And then um, we have a few extreme dates in September as well. Um, you got one huge one. There's a big one. Fenway uh, Park. You know, the, I don't even want to talk about the show because it's, it seems like it's cursed, right? So we were supposed to play. Uh, it was announced in 2020. We were invited to, to be on the Aerosmith 50th anniversary show, Extreme Direct Support for Aerosmith at Fenway Park. Okay, so obviously COVID had a different plan for that. And then they rescheduled it for uh, 21 and Aerosmith decided they were going to pull the plug on all 21 dates and wait till 22. Mm -hmm. And as you know, recently they announced that Steven Tyler was going into rehab mm -hmm. and uh, canceling, you know, a couple of months worth of dates. Right. So um, from what I've heard and read, uh, Aerosmith is planning on starting to tour like late August or early September doing their Vegas residency. And then Fenway is on. So, um, God willing, nothing will, you know. Well, how it actually that. goes, because it, it's actually <clears throat> announced. So, right now, their first show back is actually, uh, in, I think, in the New Hampshire area. Isn't it, Rob? Is it New Hampshire? Bangor, Maine. So, right now, Bangor, Maine is supposed to be the first, is announced. This is all announced as okay. the show. And then the next show is going to be, uh, would be Fenway. Right. And then they'll start the residency. Then they, do the residency. they basically right. chopped off the first two months of the residency because I just yeah. came here from Vegas and the billboards are up there it's announcing the residency to start in September. But the Fen, I mean, I understand you almost not wanting to mess with talking about it because it's almost, I would think, for a band from the Boston area, too, it's surreal for you to think that you'll play Fenway in front of Aerosmith. It would be surreal standing. Uh, you know, uh, on what is the outfield looking at, at Fenway. And, and, of course, we, we have done stadiums with Aerosmith before, so that bucket list has been checked off. You know, we were lucky to play over in Europe. We've done st soccer stadiums, and um, we did, you know, a lot of... We, we did some touring with Aerosmith uh, back in the day. And so... But to, to do it at home at Fenway with our families, with our friends coming down would be, you know, really a, an epic night for, for all of us. So Have you, uh, as, has Extreme ever played Fenway? Park? No, we've never played Fenway. Never? Yeah. So I kind of look at this as maybe a once in a lifetime opportunity to, to really, you know, to do something like that at home. That would be a thrill. You know. Maybe it's better that it doesn't happen, though, because I can't imagine your guest list. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, we were already like, okay, we only have like uh, uh, seven and a half tickets each if once we divide <laughs> them up, right? So everyone buy tickets. We, we're like, it's been crazy. We're trying to block off, you know, seats for everybody and get everyone good seats and make sure everyone's handled. But um, yeah, so so that one's definitely circled on the uh, the calendar is what, what would be the most exciting gig, uh, could be one of the most exciting gigs of the year. Or, yeah. you know, one of uh, probably of our career, you know, it'd be exciting to, to do that. So, yeah, I could only I mean, I'm, I definitely want to try to make that myself if assuming it happens. Mm -hmm. I mean, I hope Steven's getting well. I mean, I'm really glad that they, they I'm glad I said this to a lot of people at his age with what he's been through. The fact that he recognized the problem and got help immediately is yeah. great because yeah. we, we need these guys sticking around. And uh, with all the years on him, he wouldn't have lasted long if he wasn't doing the right thing. So yeah. Yeah. I it's mean, great that he's got he saw it and hopefully he gets well and will be ready to go in September. Yeah. Because that guy is just a fr the freak of freaks as far as performing and singing. And you know, as far as all the great front men from the day, he, the best. He, he's the best. He the wins best. the, you know, I mean... Th Although no the one... guy playing tonight on After You, he's he's pretty damn oh good too. God. If you see Dude, Robin, Robin Sander. Sander is one of my favorites uh, voices of of you know. So for me, this is a huge bucket list today, just to be able to play with Cheap Trick. I mean, Have you I, ever done that? We've never played with Cheap Trick. Oh my God, we've that's crossed crazy. paths a bunch of times. We've hung out with them. They've come to our shows. We've gone like a, a Gary got up on stage with them. I think and has has guested with them, but we've never you know been a support act for them. And again, it's it's kind of a trip because you know I I. I turn into fanboy when I see these guys and, and like uh, 
you know, I remember being in middle school and, and hearing I Want You to Want Me on an AM radio for the first time that some girl was like listening to and going, wow, I, I like that band. I went up, when bought the record, you know, live at Budokan. And from, from then on, I've been a massive fan. And, and, you know, so it's a thrill to play with those guys. Yeah, and they're still so good. And, and now, speaking of people's kids, so now da- Dax has been in the band in a while playing drums. Right, yep. Rick's, Rick's son. But yep. also now Robin's son, who's also named Robin, they call him RTZ, Robin Taylor's aunt, he plays in a supporting role in the <clears> band, <throat> rhythm guitar and some backing vocals, and he's a chip off the old block with Robin. It's crazy how talented that kid is. And that kid has played... In every position in the band, yep. he has subbed for Rick Nielsen. He has subbed on oh, drums for, for Dax. He wow. subbed for Tom. The only person he's yet to sub for is his dad. I saw him actually sub for Tom because I went to uh, our, our buddies Ernie Bach Jr. for yeah. the car uh, dealer from uh, New England. He had a private event and Cheap Trick was playing, so I, I was lucky enough to go to that um, event and and. Uh, Tom had just had heart surgery or yeah. something. So yeah, so he's he, back he, though. Tom's back, thankfully. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and and dude, what amazing bass tone. Oh. You know, it's that's such a big part of Cheap Trick that people don't realize is yeah. is that that uh, eight string or twelve string bass tone that he that he has. But um, yeah, his his uh, Robin son was on bass that night, so it was amazing. Yeah, it was great. So I see Gary back there, kind of pacing. He's going to come on for a few minutes. And I know he's, he's, it's like a boxer getting ready to go in the ring. He's like, he's about to fight Mike Tyson. He gets Tyson. in the zone. He's yeah, he gets in the zone. He's like, it's like he's never done an interview before. I can see him. He's, he's right next to us. And I don't have two headsets, so I can't put them on at the same time. So I'm going to let you go in a second and then take a break. And then we'll put Gary on for a few minutes and he'll get ease into it. And maybe I'll give him a shot of vodka or something, something to calm him down. <laughs> so I'm going to ask you this question so he doesn't have to deal with it, so he doesn't have to stress. The record's coming out next year. Thank you. <laughs> That's all we needed to know. That's it. It's as simple as that. Listen, we have inked a deal. I knew this question was coming. We yeah, have well, inked I, a deal I, with a, the I mean, label. We know there's a record done. There's a record, yep. And um, I know there's been a lot of talk over the last 10 years. I mean, we, you know, it's, it's been, it, you know, COVID definitely uh, threw a bit of a monkey wrench into the timing of everything. As a lot of people don't realize what goes into setting up a record. There's like seven months of press and doing videos and this and that and the other thing. So um, there will be something next year. 12 months. Front, at, front end, middle end, back end, what are you thinking? I, I'm not the one, I, I don't like to come on and make any false promises or predictions, so I'm not, I'm not going to go there. All you're but saying is next year. Next year. Possible we get a single. Because I don't know. I don't have a, I don't, well, I've never well, seen. Well, because now you have a label, right? You, you, yes. You do have a record deal for it. Yes. So that, they're going to dictate that, I would imagine, But too. that was recently signed. Right. So, yeah, they will dictate that. So they've got to do that. the setup and the plan. Exactly. They'll, they'll lay out a whole marketing plan. So for me, I can't, like, predict whether it's, I, I have no idea, you know, until it's, basically dictated to me but for the extreme fans that are asking we know the record's done and we now know there's a record deal and it will come out next year true there you go that's all we need to know all right maybe a single comes soon a lot of bands put out singles way early before the record again that that's all stuff that's out of my i just play bass are you happy with the record yeah of course yeah all right (laughs) it's like this is like extremes chinese democracy over here for god's sakes it's like you guys are like like what's the like the the mystery is unbelievable uh you know again every band has its share of of stuff will you make candles for the new record and send them out do you know about that no for the last record you guys made really cool maybe it was a christmas gift extreme candles i have it on my desk Oh, is it white with it's the extreme white. logo? Square white with the extreme logo? They're great. I, I have one, too. I had nothing to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> Someone gave it to me, too. You guys always, you're like one of the last bands that actually does nice stuff like that. Like, it used to be people mm-hmm. in my position used to get schmoozed all the time. Mm-hmm. Now I can't even get somebody to send me a CD. Wow. But, 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 it used to, but I remember one year you guys sent me a pecan pie. There was like a candle that came one year. Like, you actually, you don't know anything about it. You're like, yeah, whatever. That's all Robbie's doing. <laughs> That's all Robbie's doing. You're paying for it, though. I hate to tell you. <laughs> as long as I get one, too, then I'm, I'm okay with it. doesn't that. sound like you did. <laughs> I'm telling you about it. Uh, that's funny. Are you still doing the, are you still doing the uh, alpacas? I have a couple of alpacas as pets. Um, Melly and I have a beautiful farm that we have uh, a donkey, alpacas, chickens. We have three Nubian goats that drive me absolutely crazy. Um, but, yeah, I got a little farm up, up in... New England. The Palk, uh, when you when the Pal- 
alpaca thing came out, you were like, because you you can use the fur or something. You shave it or you, yeah, you don't yeah. do that though. I don't do that. No, I had. In fact, someone shared them while I was uh, on the plane coming out this way. Uh, <laughs> I got, yeah, he showed up and did it for me. <laughs> but I only have a couple now. But um, yeah, you shear them for their their fleece, and then people use it to you know make hats, sweaters, scarves, like a like a sheep. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, interesting. Yeah. All right, well, all right. And you, you did your own record a while ago too, right? I've done a couple of solo records. You got and, more coming and, with that? Yeah, I, I continually. I, I think Extreme's the band that like we only have like five or six Extreme records, but we have like twenty solo records. <laughs> <laughs> so that should tell you a lot right there. So I told Gary, so I, I won't even talk to you about Extreme. I'll talk about Tribe of Judah, and I'll talk yeah, about. We have all I've had them on for fifty-five different bands over the years. Yeah, so we we'll got like, Extreme. We got like ten tribute bands. Exactly. We got all, sorts you got all of kinds of stuff. On. Alpacas, yeah. Nubian sheep. <laughs> Whatever you got, if, everything. If we going. all clear our plates from everything else, <laughs> then we'll have more extreme records. But until that time, you know, we have all this other shit going on. All right, Gary softened up now. Now we softened it up a little bit for him, so now he can just come in and hang out. Oh yeah, he's oh. got some cool stuff to talk about. I know he does. He's going got going this summer. I know he does. Good to see you, bro. I'll let you. All right, you too. We'll tra trade out headsets. We'll do a break, and then we'll put Gary Sharon on for a few minutes here on Trunk Nation on volume. Coming right back after this. Thanks for having me. Thank you. All right, well, I knew we said we we're going to go free-for-all today, and we will have time for calls, but I, because I didn't, I didn't expect that these guys would actually step up to the plate and make themselves available to me. I mean, how long have I known them? I had to negotiate this like it was world peace or something. Uh, but we just had Pat Badger from Extreme, and now we have the voice of Extreme, the lead singer of the band, and the very nervous Gary Sharon. How, how many decades we've known each other? What are you worried about? I, I got my head in the gig. You, you know, how do you feel about not having played in two years? Are you are you nervous? I'm nervous. Yeah, but I get why I get nervous. Uh, I get nervous before every gig. Do you really? Uh, yeah, yeah. Even after all these decades of doing this. Yeah, because uh, my my first thought is, uh, how am I going to fool him this time? <laughs> oh come on, man! Yeah. The voice is always there with you. You're always Thanks. in great, tip top shape, ready to go. It looks like it looks like with you, COVID didn't put on 15 at all. You did just fine, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. I had uh, what we were talking before. Uh, I had COVID before um, Kevin got it, but uh, before the M3. Yeah. But it, it was a mild case, so yeah, yeah, yeah. I got you know, sometimes luck of the draw. So it's been two years since Extreme played. What have you done personally? Have you done? I mean, I know that you guys worked on a record, and as Pat said, that record will come out next year, and, and yeah. there's a deal in place, and now it's all set. But you personally, what kind of stuff did you, because you do a lot of other things. What, did, yeah, what, doing, what have you been doing? I've been busy with uh, uh, Hurt Smile, the, the, my mistress band with my brother Mark. And right. Joe Pessia from Steelheart. Uh, writing some stuff and recording. So uh, we're actually mixing a, a, a crop of songs that we're going to put out this year. So there will be music. Some music out this year. No, oh, okay. Yeah. So you do stuff with Hurt Smile, which is a yeah. cool band for people that haven't heard it. Yeah. Uh, you did a few, you did a few things with them. Couple, so. yeah, a couple records with them. You know, uh, toured not not extensively, but gone to Japan with them. I love it. It's, it's an opportunity to write with my brother Mark, and uh, talented, talented guys. Yeah, keeps yeah. me busy for sure. And also, you got something. You know, you've done this before, and this is a byproduct, unfortunately, of what Pat and I talked about with Aerosmith pushing things back a bit. Now Joe Perry's going to go out and do some project dates, yeah. and you played and sang with him before, and you're going to do it again, which is awesome. Tell me about that. Yeah, th that was the silver lining of, from my end to play uh, to play with Joe again. I didn't think it was going to happen again, you know. Um, but when the, t the Tyler news came out, uh, I heard from Paul Geary works with with Joe. He says uh, Joe's thinking about going out there and uh, doing some dates, and I was just like, yeah. So, because, um, what was it, two years ago I played with him? I think it was 10, 20... Probably around 20, that, maybe 2019, more, yeah. 2018. I've done a handful of shows, always been great. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's surreal. You know, this is Aerosmith, this is Beantown, this is Joe. You know, so to play with him never gets old, very excited. We're going to, uh, going to uh, South America for two dates. Oh, is that right? I, yeah. didn't, I know that and there's three shows right now announced in the U.S. Oh, geez. I, Did you know that? <laughs> yeah. No, but I guess we haven't announced the, uh, I don't know if they announced the Brazilian. Well, we're not thing. on in Brazil, so okay. don't worry about it. All right. And then but, nobody will put that yeah, on they, the internet, they, I'm sure. They announced the East Coast dates. 
we got a date with ZZ Top, which is great. Uh, we're doing something at uh, the casino up in uh, New Hampshire. And there's a date in Atlantic City I saw, yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. I think we've done that before. Yeah. So three dates. You know, I, I think the Aerosmith guys are uh, planning on rehearsing in uh, August, getting getting that that ball rolling again. I was going to say, is there talk and maybe do some more, that, that Joe would add some more? Yeah, know. depending on their schedule. Right. I told them I'm available. <laughs> I love it. It's, 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 uh, he actually asked me uh, um, to, uh, you know, dig up some older tracks. Oh, you know, that they don't do so. I got suggestions. I love the first Joe Perry project record. Oh yeah, Great. I love that. Is the most it, Ralph Mormon. Uh, but it's Singer such guy. a raw, like yeah, Ralph Mormon. But the stuff Joe sings oh, yeah. on it. I mean, yeah. it's such a raw, like my God. I still crank that record up to this day. I'm pulling up the track list because oh, discount it's so, dogs. I think they're. I think well, the well let the music do the talking, which they, of course then Original. Aerosmith redid yeah. with different lyrics. Conflict of interest, yeah. discount dog, shooting star, which I always wanted Ace Freely to cover. Wow. Because the lyric, you know, my brand new ship is stellar bound, Spaceman. Yeah. I've told him about that a thousand times. Break song, which is instrumental, Rock yeah. and Train, that's Ralph Mormon. Yeah, we're going to do that, yeah. The Mist is Rising is so Love cool. It. Love it. That it's lick almost, in that. It's Jimmy Page-ish. It's, oh. it's Zeppelin. Ready on the firing line and Life yeah. at a Glance. The yeah. record is killer. And when you hear that record, it feels like you're, it, it's, it's so live feeling. Yeah. Now, what are you going to do? We, yeah, we're going to do, we'll do some old school. But when you, when you talk about that record, it was, it, was, it was bittersweet for me because uh, being an Aerosmith diehard. Me too. You know. When uh, I, I first time I heard the record, I'm like, this shit could have been, this shit could have been Aerosmith songs. Right. Know? But it ended up great. And uh, the second record with Charlie Farron. Looking at it right now, East yeah. Coast, West Coast, no yeah. substitute for arrogance, which is killer. Oh, yeah. yeah. I got the rock and rolls again, buzz, buzz. Yeah. I mean, th you should just do these two records in their yeah. entirety. Tell Joe that that's the f that's the set. Twenty yeah. songs, boom. <laughs> that is amazing, man. I love those two records so much. And Joe, actually, Joe announced that he's doing the, the solo record he made, Switzerland Manifesto. Yeah. There's another version coming, and you have a song on that too, yeah. right? Yeah, uh, wrote, uh, there's a few tracks, some of the best tracks with uh, Chris Robinson uh, sings a track. There's another Xander track on that. I was lucky enough to uh, write a song with Joe that's going to go on didn't it was too late for those songs to go on the original record so it's uh, manifesto part two right. or whatever. yeah right right and we're going to do some of those tracks uh, it's funny um, I think of the first rehearsals I did with Joe um, when Whitford Whitford did a run with the with the solo uh, last time and uh, you know you could you could spend hours doing those songs, but I, I was I was uh, I was bugging the shit out of uh, uh, Whitford. I was pulling out, you know, write me a letter, oh, yeah. all, all that stuff. Well, Brad's stuff with Aerosmith was actually very heavy, like round and round is super. Some heavy. of the heaviest that, stuff. The heaviest stuff. Yeah, yeah. Nobody's fault is Brad. I mean, it's really heavy stuff in yeah. that. With, with the Joe Perry project, when he does this and this these shows coming up. How many Aerosmith songs are actually in the set as well? That's that's always a... Maybe something like Combination, I would think. No, it does so combo, but he's going to do, you know, he likes to do the Aerosmith that they don't do. Right. You know, so that's that's uh, going going deeper. You know, we pulled out Pandora's Box. Uh, we pulled out Adam's Apple. Ugh. Um, some stuff that he didn't do. So there's some tracks, uh, some older tracks on the first and second record we're going to pull out. And uh, I'm, I'm curious, as a fellow Aerosmith fanatic like myself, you mentioned it was bittersweet when, when 1980 rolled around, Let the Music Do the Talk and comes out, and you're thinking that. But what were your thoughts on uh, Rock and a Hard Place? Rock and a Hard Place. It? Great record. Because I mean, it was almost one of those rare things where for a brief time it was addition by subtraction. Because yeah. I, I love Rock and a Hard Place, and I love the first project records. Yeah. So it was almost like... Okay, I want the, I want Joe back in Aerosmith, of yeah. course. But for right now, this is actually both things are actually really cool. Yeah, I was working at a record store, and just to see the different faces. Uh, what was it? 
No, Whit, uh, was Whitford on? Whitford was still in the band. He, the Rock and Hard Place does not picture Brad. It pictures Rick Dufay. Right. He actually didn't play on the record. Right. The record, I was told that all the guitars on Rock and Hard Place are Crespo. But then Brad left, and then they brought in Rick Dufay. And they right. picture, I like In Dufay. time for the photo and the tour, but he's actually not, doesn't play on the record. Right. Crespo's on that. Cre uh, Crespo yeah. did the whole record. Yeah. But he's on, he's on the back, right? Crespo and Dufay are pictured on yeah. the back, yeah. I like the record. It's great. It's still, Tyler was, you know, still, you know, his voice wasn't, his voice wasn't peaking, but it's still... It still had the essence, you know. Oh, yeah. He he was, he was, you know. You could tell he was a, a little wary on that record, but the songs were great. Well, he was at the height of his drug addiction. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he was struggling, but still, the I mean, bitches brew and yeah. jail bait and Bolivian uh, ragamuffin. Yeah, there's uh, a lightning moment. Strikes, there's yeah. a lightning strikes, which they'll do every once in a while with the current band. Right, but th there's a moment in um, I forget what song it is. Uh, uh, maybe it's Jig is up. I don't know, but there's a there's there's a moment in that song where if you listen, I didn't realize this, and it was actually Snake from Skid Row told me this a long time ago. If you listen closely, Tyler's so out of it, and he didn't have a, vo a, a lyric for a certain part of the song. He actually recites the. Um, is it the Burger King or the McDonald's oh, yeah. thing at the time? Spe hold, hold the pickle, pickle hold, hold the lettuce. lettuce. He actually Special orders don't upset He sings anymore. that yeah. on the freaking record. It's <laughs> one of the lyrics. Because, and I was like, how is that? Because I, I think Jack Douglas did I heard that it the record other day. too. And you listen to it and you're like, holy shit, he's singing the Burger King theme from 1980. I didn't know the story behind that. Yeah, that he just didn't have anything and just said fuck it and sang yeah. that. Uh, Nuno, big fan of, of, of that record. Rock, Rock and Hard Place. Place. Yeah. yeah. And I used to see Crespo, because Crespo lives in Vegas for years. Still does, but he, he used to be out and about and playing the clubs a little bit. I already had some health problems. I haven't seen oh, him much in a while. But I had him on because when Rock and Hard Place hit 40, I guess it was, he played wow. it. He played it in oh, Vegas really? in its entirety oh, wow. with his own band. So on YouTube? And I went to it. I yeah. went. It was great. It's good? Yeah, yeah. It was great. Yeah. So Jimmy, yeah, Jimmy. And when Aerosmith played Vegas, they invited Jimmy to come see them. And oh, that's nice. So there's, they're, they're yeah. definitely cool. But I, I haven't seen or heard much about Jimmy in a while. Um, I can't let that. Now, Pat talked about the extreme record. Next year, we know all that. Yeah. Anything you want to add about it? Uh, there'll be, uh, I'm hopeful with, the, I think the record company is going to push uh, some music this year. I okay. Think, so maybe a video or um, at least something out because if we're going to set up the record, you know, we'll, we'll be releasing music. So I'd like to think I'm, I'm a wishful thinker. I think we're going to get some music out for the fans. There's a, there's a strategy now who knows the best way to release records anymore because it's the wild west, but there's some artists do things where they'll put out like three, four, five singles videos before the actual albums even available. Others, one song, the record comes out in a month sort of thing. What do you think's the better way to go? I, you know, I was, I was, a uh, I think a Wolfie. And when he released, he put out a lot before he put his out record. at least five or six tracks yes. before the record came out. I thought it was great. Yeah. Um, I think that sometimes confuses fans, though, because they're like, well, where is the actual record already? Like, you almost forget that there's a full record coming, and you feel like it's almost out already, and yeah. there's too much. So I think there's a line. Yeah. My thought, you know, th th it's like the news cycle is so quick. I don't know about, you know, if you, you, put, out, you put out a record, the whole record, and not set it up, at least tease, you know, the fans. It comes and goes. There's something else yeah. that... Everyone looks the other way. So, Short attention span. Yeah. So I, I, uh, I kind of, I kind of lean towards, you know, trickling it out a little bit, at yeah. least two or three. Yeah. You know, yeah. before the record comes out, man. You know, I think uh, old school. Those days are over. Yeah. You know, um, uh, I'd like to keep on putting out music. Doesn't even have to be a record at this point. Yeah. yeah. How do you feel about the material? Uh, that's what I wanted to add. I think. Um, no, I think this is some of the best stuff Nuno and I have written. Wow. In our in our catalog. Yeah. I think he would say the same thing. And plus Nuno Nuno's um you know it, it, there's there's only one Nuno and uh he he outdid himself on this record. Yeah. I I I'm not I don't want to hype it, but I think uh Nuno's ballistic on it. His his solos are 
they they blow me away and I'm I'm tired of listening to them. <laughs> <laughs> right, I was going to say, you've been great. saying they listen to them for decades, so yeah. for you to say that, that's a big... big... No, it's, it, well, I, I look at it as how, how does he outdo himself, but yeah. he, he does, I think. Uh, and uh, proud of proud of uh, a lot of the songs on the record that me and Nuno wrote. So, yeah, good, yeah. good. Well, I can't wait. I heard 30 seconds of it a few minutes ago, so that's all a I heard. solo, right? I heard yeah. a solo, yeah. yeah. That's the first thing you yeah, right, yeah. So, but I, I look forward to hearing the record, and uh, I know the fans look forward to getting Okay, I cannot let you go without asking you about this. Okay. I have always defended your tenure in Van Halen. And I've always said that you have. Uh, I've always have, yeah. and um, because I feel strongly about it. So we know now that because it's come out, you know, Satriani, Jason Newstead, Michael Anthony was on here a couple weeks ago talking about it. They keep trying to get something together for Eddie. Right? Would have you been contacted? Has there been any dialogue that you've had with them? No, no, I haven't been. And uh, you know, I think it it all stems from. Uh, I, I think. I think it's a lot of clickbait. I mean, I, I I know things come up every month, and the obvious thing is you want to put on a tribute. I think I think of the Freddie Mercury tribute. You know, I'm like, Eddie deserves that. Or look what is happening just announced with Taylor Hawkins. Exactly. Yeah, I yeah. mean that. Which that, is wonderful. It's wonderful, but yeah. here Taylor's been gone a couple months, and now we've got a. a, a in London and L.A. and announcements and charity and everything, and it's like, here we are. Uh, Eddie's gone two years in October, and we're hearing from all respect to Jason Newstead, but he breaks this, and then right. Roth says something, and then Satch says something, and it's all been confirmed that there was dialogue. Michael said yeah. that a year ago there was dialogue, right. but it just can't seem to, like, right. to me it should be so easy. A guy like Eddie Van Halen, anyone you ask is going to step to the plate. Right. Right. And just like the fact that they, it can't, like, yeah. But well, first, yeah, I, I'm sure you know. Uh, I think this. I think the singers are the secondary. I think it. You know, this is an Eddie Van Halen tribute, so it's all, it's all Eddie's disciples. You know, you th or whatever. Not even Eddie's disciples, but you know, the the hierarchy of guitar players. You think of Vi Satriani. You know? And well, your own guitar players come That's, up a lot in this dialogue. It's well, I haven't heard hypothetical. it. Hypothetical. Yeah, Nuno, Nuno people Nuno should that be, would, yeah. Nuno, John Five, Zach Wild, people like yeah. that as well. Absolutely. So, yeah. I think at the end of the day, it's going to be Alex. Alex will be the final word on it, whether he wants to do it. It's, you know, I mean, uh, if it happens, it'd be great. And uh, you can see, uh, all I can see is a sound check nightmare. Because <laughs> it's, one thing for, it's one thing for singers to go up there, you give them a mic, they sing. You know, you, the, you go back to the Freddie Mercury. Everybody has a mic. It's it's a you know common denominator. And uh, but with guitar players, soundcheck's going to be crazy because everyone's got their own amps. It's going to be a nightmare. Yeah, it's going to blow true. up. It's going to blow up before before the gig. <laughs> Maybe that's why they can't get it off the bat. Now you, you know, guitar players. You're dealing with guitar players. <laughs> Everyone says lead singers are the problem. You're saying singers it's are tough. Players. Singers are tough, but you know, <laughs> when it comes to equipment, you know, it's just mic. So it's just a mic. So that I, that's the first thing I thought of. I go sound check. Yeah, it's gonna be it's, who's going on? Who who's sound checking before who? <laughs> you, needless to say, if it happens, you you would be of open course. to doing it, right? Of course. I mean, yeah. you're you're one of only three people that have been lead singers on Van Halen records. I mean, yeah. that, so you absolutely should have a, whether yeah. you do without you or something. Just get up there and have some some placement in that of the three guys that have ever sung in Van Halen. You know? Yeah. So you're totally open with it. It's just that they put it together and they call you. Yeah, if they do it, of course. And, that, and, and Pat's raising his hand. He's ready to play bass if they need a bass player at all. <laughs> you know, I never asked you this either. Did you have any dialogue with Eddie before he passed? Did you? I did. You did. I Can did. you share anything about that? Uh, we re we rekindle our relationship like in end of 2015, 16, and uh, it was just I reached out to him, and we picked up where we left off. It was, it was, it was, uh, it was wild because. Uh, we, you know, we went back and forth, and we talked. And then when I went out to L.A., I finally got to see him, and it was, it was great. It was. Uh, uh, he was. Was he ill when you saw him? He was going through. He was going Treatment. through. Yeah. Yeah. He's going through that, but he was. Uh, all he said to me was, "I'm, I'm kicking its ass." And at the time, he was. You know, he'd have good days, and, uh, you know, there was one time I, I saw him. And he was just getting back, and he was just like, ah, man, I'm not feeling great. You know, that's cool. 
we can just hang for a little while. But uh, he was great. And then it was, um, I think the last six months, it got real quiet. Um, I reached out to him a few times, and it was, it was, he got back to me later. And uh, I just had a feeling something was going down. When you were reconnecting with him, were you guys talking about doing any music again together, or was it just friends kind of reconnecting? It was friends, but there was, uh, there was a couple conversations. Uh, little did I know until it was confirmed by, like, Wolfie um, after Eddie passed. I remember hanging out. I remember hanging out with Eddie, and he was talking about the, the kitchen sink, not in those terms, but he was talking about... Um, oh, it was around the time that there was, what was it, the 40th anniversary, and they were talking about getting together to do something, I think, with Dave. Okay, because to... Wolf has said that there was a, a kitchen sink tour, which was yeah. going to be you, Sammy, and Dave. So the conversation I had with him was, uh, I said, yeah, when you do that, Ed, you know, when you're doing, no, it wasn't the kitchen sink thing, when, he, when they were talking about... Uh, doing something again with those guys I, I i remember saying hey if it doesn't work out i know a singer for cheap and he <laughs> laughed and he and he looked at me and at the time he goes he goes you never know you never know and then i i remember thinking going that was that was odd i remember going i just remembered him saying that and then when wolfie said it after he passed i go that that was his reference mm. but we you know um we, we talked music, you know, we talked about uh, the record and, you know, the... The record you made. Yeah, record. yeah, yeah, yeah. What was his thoughts on that in retrospect? He was, he was proud of it. He loved it. Yeah. You know, uh, you know, for me in retrospect, you know, the, the production and uh, I think, uh, I think, um, I, I've said it, I've said it a few times. I wish, I wish I went on tour with uh with the guys before i did the record because mm. it was a it was a project that turned into a band you know we we wrote from the first day on and that was great and we hit it off but you know you had to feel each other out but by the time we were on tour there, there was a brotherhood so when we got back in and you would write and we would jam you know scatter over things that's when that's when things felt you know Good. So you're saying that there would have been a better chemistry with you and the band and the whole thing together yeah, if you I would thought, have done some shows and did the live thing first yeah. and then went and made a record. Yeah, because I was feeling my way around too. But, I mean, it was I was comfortable there, but it, I thought it locked in. That 98 tour was great. I thought Eddie was on fire. Um, you know, the set list was... B both eras, you know. The same You're the stuff. only guy that, I mean, Sammy played a, did a couple Roth songs when he was in, but not a lot. And yeah. uh, let's be honest, Dave could never sing Sammy's stuff. So the, you were the, I've said that a million times, you were the one guy that would equally handle both eras mm. and did it well. And of course, your own stuff from three. But yeah. I mean, that was, that's really, not a lot of people are willing to or could do that. So I, I think, you know, uh, after, as time goes on, um, I think the record is is received. It's not as you know uh, criticizes. I, I I just think over over time people have accepted a little bit more. Of course, it's an it's an anomaly. I I don't think it's fair to me to put me as an as a Van Halen era. You know, you got Sammy ten plus ten years, right? Basically, right. almost. But for me. It was a record. Now, if I, if I had a couple of records with him, then I think you could, you could uh, uh, put it in that category. But it was a tour too. I mean, it yeah. was a big, pretty big tour. You guys yeah. did how many shows on that run? I don't know. Uh, we did. We played Australia. I so, saw you at Madison Square yeah. Garden on it. Uh, first time playing Australia, New Zealand. You know, Europe got canceled because Alex got hurt. Uh, but it was extensive in America. I was going to ask you, was there a highlight for you in your time in Van Halen? Was there one thing that jumps out, a show, a moment, maybe just the holy shit factor of I'm recording a record with Van Halen? Yeah, Pat, <laughs> Pat used to come visit me up, uh, uh, up at Eddie's house. and uh, I'm sure a lot of people wanted to come visit you when you were in Nuno, Van Halen. Yeah, Nuno, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was like a kid, yeah, it was like, uh, like a family building a... a, a a pool in the backyard. You find out you got a lot of neighbors. Yeah. Um, 
that was a trip. But I, you know, when 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 Pat would come up, he's like, "You're in, you know, you're, you're, you're in my Hitler. favorite band." <laughs> yeah, okay. No pressure or anything. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And you know, you've done stuff with Sammy. You've jumped up and you've done stuff with Sammy on stage, like in in recent years. Oh like, yeah. Where you guys have yeah, like, Sammy's oh, great. Yeah. Always been. Uh, consider him a close friend now yeah but uh he invited me like 2001 uh when he came into town and then ever since then every time he comes in he'll invite me i'm like i just want to see the show yeah i don't have to come up and sing but but and what know, about roth have you ever met or done anything with roth extreme toward with roth uh but not, not when you were in the not after you were in van halen no no right before uh, yeah i've never but since you were since you did van halen have you ever talked to roth or met roth or done anything with roth no what was it like when Extreme went out with him? Initially? Roth was great. Yeah. Uh, what was what was the record? Uh, Eat him. Uh, what was it? A little ain't enough. Yeah. Yeah. And Extreme was on that tour with Cinderella, and uh, that was right around more than words blew up. <laughs> Dave was great. He was great to us. A little ain't enough was the record that Jason Becker recorded, but I think it was Joe Holmes who yeah. did the tour, right? Yeah. Yeah, if I recall, right? Yeah. Because yeah. Jason Becker, at, uh, ALS after the recording, and um, remarkably, uh, Jason Becker still hanging in there. It's yeah. just incredible. If you've not seen a documentary called Not Dead Yet, wow. it is an amazing documentary about Jason Becker that was done already over 10 years ago, I believe. And the title refers to the fact that he was given like, I don't know, a couple of years to live, and that was 25 years ago. Yeah. And it's an amazing, and actually, when, when Eddie passed away, Eddie Van Halen passed away, video came out of Eddie visiting Jason Becker and giving him a guitar. I think I've seen that. Is yes, that, yeah. and his family, Eddie did that privately and didn't want it to be known, but then after Eddie passed, as a tribute to Eddie, Jason's family put that video out to say, That's right. look at the type of guy that Eddie Van Halen was that he didn't want people to know. Right. But he actually went there, gave Jason a guitar. He was a fan of Jason's. You talked to him in the early stages of Jason you know, battling ALS. It's what, a remarkable story. What year story. was that? I think that was, Eddie visited him? Yeah. I don't know. It could have been when you were in the band. I think it was. Because it could have been around that time for sure. I think it was. I saw the clip, and I didn't know when it was. Uh, I saw Eddie and how he looked, and I go, man, that's familiar. And I think he played. Um, I think he played without you. Mm. Uh, it was either, either when I, just before I joined the band, because he had that riff, the day I got there, and uh, or it was at that time. Yeah. Was that the first thing he played for you musically? Yeah. Was the song without you? Yeah. Well, he uh, we we did our, we did the audition. We took lunch break, and uh, and uh, he goes, "Hey, you want to write a song?" I go, yeah. And uh, so he came in, he, he played, he was playing that, Alex playing it. And uh, I ended up started scatting over it. And uh, yeah, we wrote, we wrote that song the first day. Wow. First day. And it ended up being the first single on the yeah. record too. Yeah. I still love that song. That's a great song. Uh, Joel, let's play a little bit of that when we let Gary go. Pull that up if you can, please, without you from, from uh, Van Halen 3. All right. And last thing. Mm-hmm. Did you, did you, I know that you guys wrote, meaning Eddie Van Halen and Van Halen, you guys started working on what would have been a second record with yeah. you, right? Yeah. Because I've heard some of the stuff that would have been that record. Yeah. What, what, uh, do, you, do you think that stuff will ever see the light of the day? And how, lo how much of it, how complete was it? Was it just demos? Some, there, was a, there was a bunch of songs. Uh, a lot of them were demos. Some were, some were Eddie playing drums. Some was just a you know uh, a drum machine. Uh, some were some were jams with the band, and and a few were brought to production. We had a we had a um, oh, fuck. I'm trying to think. Uh, um, uh, he's escaping me the name, but we did a few things with a uh, with a producer. Um, they were they were good. Whether they come out, that's that's Alex. Yeah, and that's the big thing, whether it's the tribute thing or whether it's the archives that exist that we know. Yeah. If they'll come out, will they come out? Uh, I've talked to Wolf about it. Wolf is like, I'm focused on my thing now. It's going to take time to dig through it. Some of it's not labeled. It's, it's really a project to assign a couple people to if they ever wanted to do it. I know for a fact there's a box set that's done and ready to go for years 
but it's that's held up in some. I heard oh, it. I oh, heard really? stuff on it. Oh yeah, really? Oh yeah. Wow. I've heard stuff on it. So there is. It's just. Uh, it's hard. To, I mean, I asked Michael Anthony about it a couple of weeks ago. He's like, "Look, the Van Halen situation's tough. It's, it's it's a bit of a soap opera at times." And that was his take. I mean, do you have any insights as to why you think it's so hard for them to get things out or make things happen? Or is just they just don't, do they not realize the magnitude of it for the fans? Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. I yeah. mean, it's it's. I mean. That's tough. Yeah. That's in that in that camp. It's tough, and you know, it, uh, Alex is the Alex is the last word on that. Yeah. And you know, I, you know, with with Wolfie, you know, he's he uh, he's doing his own thing. I, I like how he I like how he handles. I do too. You know, um, the record's great. Yep. He's doing his own thing. He's not he's not there to to play Van Halen music. He's a musician. He's an artist. He's he's putting out his music. Uh, that was one of the first things that he did uh, w when I saw him. All he could do was talk about Wolf, and he was playing me. He was playing me Wolf's material um, at the time, mm. you know. And uh, so I know Wolf has said uh, he. I'm sure he's got enough material for a second and third record already. He's working on a second record, and I know that he said Wolf told me that too. He said that his dad would always tell him, you do you, meaning yeah. do your own thing. Don't be a clone of me or try to do. And I think, I've said it many times, Wolf could have taken a really easy path if he wanted to go out and basically do a Van Halen tribute oh, yeah. and play half the songs or, or, or more. But he, the fact that he didn't do any of that to the point that not even play a note of eruption and made right. it his own thing, I think that, I mean, I think that in the end, it's going to be more rewarding for him because it's his own thing. Yeah. But also it's, a, you know, it's, it's, a, but then again, that's a damned if you do, damned if you don't. Because then, of course, if he went out and played three quarters Van Halen songs, everybody would say, would say he's just trading off his dad's past. Yeah. So, you know, that you know how people are. You can't win. Oh, you yeah. can't lose no matter yeah. what you do. So, yeah. All right. Uh, the Van Halen tribute, if it happens, it happens. Um, I, I don't know. You know, there's always going to be a demand because people, people got to, People got to hang on to it. Uh, I don't think it should be a tour. I've said that no. before. I think the mistake they're making is even saying tour. That would be a nightmare. You talk about the sound checks. Forget it. That would be a nightmare trying, trying to do a tour. But a one-time show, do charity. This way it takes the money stuff out of it. And go and, and get yourself, Sammy, Dave, some guest singers. Everybody does a few songs. Like you said, who, what guitar player wouldn't want to do two, three right. songs? Just like I went to the uh, Chris Cornell tribute at the Forum. And the way they did that, uh, the Audio Slave guys came out, played a couple songs with guest singers, Soundgarden, then they had different right. groups of people. Yeah. And shoot it, record it, give all the money. Eddie had that charity, Mr. Holland's Opus, which Wolf told me was so important to him. Give all the money to that. Yeah. And just do one big send-off. Do yeah. it at the Forum or whatever, Staples, and be done with it. Yeah. I yeah. think that's the way to do it. Well, I'll leave you with this. Um, Extreme will do our own someday. A tribute to Van Halen. Mr. Ed. That would be awesome if you did that. Yeah. Like a full set of VH? Yeah, we got, I think, you know, I think uh, the poor man's Michael Anthony could do background vocals, right? <laughs> I, think, I think Pat Badger would be fine. Can, he'll be fine, and I think Nuno can uh, handle. Nuno can do, you know. Handle. You know what's funny, though, real quick on that? Speaking of Nuno, which, of course, you know, the ridiculous musician that he is. He, um, we were on the Monsters of Rock Cruise. I don't know if it was the last one that we were all on or a previous one, but that Van Halen tribute the Atomic Punks were playing. Who yeah, were yeah. Cr oh, he went on. He played with them. Well, he did. But, you know, it's funny because they didn't have his number. And I, and I so I was in the room while they were getting ready. And they, those guys were saying to me, Joe and, and, and everybody in, in, the, uh, in that band were saying, hey, tell Nuno we need him at this time. And here's, we want him to play a couple songs. So I'm texting Nuno because we had the texting on the ship. And he said, Nuno says to me, tell him I'll play anything that they want me to play except Mean Street. And I said to, I said to Nuno, I text him back, I go, why not Mean Street? And he goes, I can't play the open of Mean Street. He goes, I just can't do it right. Wow. I can't. And I was stunned. I'm like, Nuno cannot play the open of Mean Street. So... I, I go and I don't I'm know. I'm surprised if, he admitted that. I don't know if they got that message, but 
Gary, I swear to God, here comes Nuno walking in at the point of the thing, and the singer goes up to the mic and he goes, all right, Nuno's here. He goes, let's do Mean Street. And I was like, oh, <laughs> And I didn't do it intentionally. They just didn't get the note. And New I swear to God, they, they started. No, he didn't do the beginning. They oh, just okay. started the song. Nah, 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 okay. nah, 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 nah. And they he didn't play the beginning part. Ah. But I'm like, there's something Nuno, I'm sure... He could, he could do if it, he but he, up. right, or maybe he just didn't have it down. But. That is kryptonite. That's, That's what I'm saying. Who yeah. knew? Yeah. Who knew? What was your favorite Roth era song to do, and your favorite Hagar era song when you sang in the band? Um, Romeo. Oh and, yeah, uh, I'm the one. Yeah. Uh, the Hagar stuff was tough. I, when I when I was in good voice, I I liked Dreams because it was such a challenge. That's so high. It was ridiculous. Oh, my God. I didn't, I didn't uh, it's funny, the nights, you know, nights I was tired, I'd look at Alex, i go, no dreams tonight. <laughs> i go, uh, I feel your love. Would, uh, Way I, easier, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll pull that off. But, uh, yeah. Great to Those see you, of, man. Yeah. Thank see, you that so was much. harmless. It was, it was easy. Come on. Come on. I'm like, we're just hanging out. Are, are we so taping? Good. Can you know, we do it now? The, no, the, the whole country just heard you. It's live. Oh, the, the, oh we were on? <laughs> we were on. <laughs> like he's, now, he's all nervous. Hey, I can't wait to see you uh, back in action tonight, man. Looking forward Looking to Looking forward it. to Extreme. Back after over two years tonight in Corning, California, opening for Cheap Trick. What a great bill. It's going to be a great night here in Northern California. And again, you can see Extreme. Other shows coming up, including Monsters on the Mountain in Tennessee, uh, Gatlinsburg on the 19th of August, and Rockin' the Rivers, Three Forks, Montana, August 12th. And then, oh, yeah, opening for that band, Aerosmith, at Fenway Park. Oh, yeah. Insanely cool is that going to be. And also see Gary singing with the Joe Perry Project coming up on the dates that they've announced as well. Great, great stuff. Thank you, man. Thank you. Appreciate Ed. it. Thanks for we'll coming by. Tonight. All right, we'll see you later. All right, we'll let Gary get out of here. We'll let Pack it out of here, and we'll figure, uh, finish up with some calls. We're super late for breaks, but we'll get caught up and get a few calls in right after this on Trunk Nation. <laughs> Look at that. That was painless, right? This guy's making their way out as nothing. <laughs> These guys have been playing music 30, 35 years. You would have thought they were coming into the lion's den here. They were pacing, looking. I don't know if I should, you know, anything we say, whatever. They come in and just, it's all good. That was great stuff. Are you kidding me? Uh, forget about the free-for-all Thursday. Again, I'll grab some of your calls, but as I tell you guys all the time, this show is completely spontaneous, which is the way I like it. You never know what's going to happen. Sometimes we lay out a, a plan, and that plan can sometimes go off. And when you got a couple of the guys from Extreme here who haven't spoken to anybody or done anything in a couple of years, and you want it, and they want to come on, and I could coax them into coming on as I did, that's what you're going to go with. Uh, tomorrow we will go with Free For All for sure, and I will get some calls here just before we're done. But thank you to Gary Sharon. Thank you to Pat Badger. Great stuff, great stuff, great Van Halen stuff there from Gary Sharon, and great insights. And, yeah, you know, same deal. I mean, he doesn't know. If they decide to do something, of course he's in. But he, like he said and everyone said, it's now very much falling on the – Alex Van Halen uh, desk. It's clearly Alex apparently got this ball rolling at one point where he was considering doing something, which is where the whole Satriani Newstead discussions happened. But it seems like that was like a year ago. And as Michael Anthony said a couple weeks ago, it's been all quiet really ever since. And Gary just backed that up as well. But interesting stuff from Gary about his time in the band, the live shows, the album, what would have been the next album with him, uh, reconnecting with Eddie at the time of his, uh, you know, his sickness. Uh, great stuff. So thank you to both Gary and Pat for coming by. Look forward to seeing them tonight. And look, above, above and beyond all, all of it, truly, I've said this so often, Extreme are an amazing live band. Amazing playing, all 100% real vocals, just just killer, as our cheap trick. So that's going to be a great double bill here tonight at the Rolling Hills Casino in uh, Corning, California. Great to see those guys, old friends. We haven't seen each other in a while. It'll be a fun night here tonight for sure. And I look forward to hosting it. I'm um, seeing everybody out here if they are in this part of the country.